This mid-century Lane Acclaim furniture was recently found in the trash, and it required more work than I originally thought. Welcome to Mad City Modern, Episode 3 of the Lane Acclaim Restoration Series. In this video, I'll restore and refinish an iconic Lane Acclaim coffee table. Which of these five finishes would you choose for this table? And take a guess which one I chose. As shown in the previous two episodes of this Lane Acclaim series, I have collected more than 15 Lane Acclaim furniture pieces from the late 1950s and early 1960s. Although these are a favorite of mine to collect, I don't intend to keep most of these furniture pieces. I just want to do the best that I can to restore and refinish these to hopefully keep them out of the landfill. A local viewer by the name of Mark reached out to me offering this Lane Acclaim cocktail table that he recently found in the trash. And although it does have some obvious damage, I'll do the best that I can to restore it and refinish it. In episodes 1 and 2 of this restoration series, I discuss the Lane Acclaim furniture history in more detail. 900-01 is the cocktail table according to the Lane Acclaim catalog and the manufacturing date 1031 of 1959. This was manufactured in Alta Vista, Virginia. I spend a considerable amount of time going over every furniture piece to come up with a unique game plan for each project. We know that this table was manufactured in 1959 and it's my understanding this was the first year of the Lane Acclaim series. This table doesn't appear to have an original finish I usually like to keep the original finishes on at least the legs, however the legs here as you'll see appear to be much lighter than most of the other furniture pieces that I own. For that reason I will apply a new finish to the legs as well. The top and bottom sides of this table are covered in a thin layer of veneer, so I'll only use the carbide scraper in the areas where I need to scrape off some of the dirt. Once the table had been cleaned, I started sanding the obvious blemishes with 150 grit sandpaper. Once I started sanding, I realized how easy this finish could be removed, and for that reason, I decided to sand this entire table by hand. Because the sides of this table were made of solid ash or fruit wood and intended to look handcrafted, I sanded these carefully in order to keep the rounded edges. I'll continue sanding this table with different sanding blocks. Some will be intended to keep the organic shapes of this table and I'll be linking all of these products in the description below. I recently started posting a variety of daily updates on my Instagram page at Mad City Furniture and also on my Facebook page at Mad City Modern, so I hope you'll consider following me there as well. As the channel continues to grow, I've had more difficulty keeping up with all the specific furniture questions from so many viewers around the world, and I'll continue to do my best to keep up with all those questions but I'm excited to announce a new Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash madcitymodern. This is a way to help support the channel directly, but also a way for you to offer input regarding future content on this channel. I'm excited to use that platform to offer more behind the scenes content that doesn't make the channel. I'll list all the ways you can support the channel in the description for this video. However, I never want that to be the primary focus of these videos. I do this because I love it, and as the business continues to grow, 
I'm grateful for all the support from so many viewers around the world. According to my YouTube analytics, more than 76% of my viewers on the channel are not subscribed to the channel. It takes several days for me to put together just one video for this channel, and less than five seconds for you to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up, and the notification bell so you don't miss new content. So I would kindly ask, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying this content. Before I finish sanding this table, I want to clean it and begin addressing the damage. Most of the dings and scratches are on the dovetail design, which is a thin layer of ash veneer. The wood fibers are likely pressed in, so I'll apply heat and the steam from the iron should help open the pores of this wood grain and raise the grain. Sometimes this method works well, other times it doesn't. In this case, it worked well and I'll be able to improve this even more by using 220 grit sandpaper for the final sanding. I've never had to disassemble a Lena Klein piece until now, and this piece couldn't simply be glued back together because the joint has been separated for so many years that there's so much dirt in there that needs to be removed. So I applied heat to remove any remaining glue and then slowly began to pry the edge of this table off. I'll gently apply pressure with two thin paint scrapers and slowly work my way along the edge. I won't put any pressure on the thin layer of walnut veneer in the middle of this table. We can now see that the core of this furniture, or the substrate, is manufactured mostly using particle board which is just very fine wood particles bonded together. I'll spend the next 20 minutes with this small carbide scraper removing all the old glue and dirt. I'll also gently sand all the loose particles from the substrate, making sure not to sand the edges of the walnut veneer. This is the perfect opportunity to see just how thin the walnut veneer is and why it's so easily damaged when using power sanders. We can also see a clear line where the light solid ash border transitions into a thin layer of veneer. If you currently own a Lane Acclaim furniture piece, then I'd be curious if you can now spot this transition line. To help fill any remaining gaps, I'll use wood glue and some sawdust that I've collected from the orbital sander. I'll also use some walnut shavings. I'm working currently on a project using solid walnut, and Beaver sent over this thickness planer I've been using for that project. That project will be on the channel this week as well. I've been very pleased with this new addition to the shop, and I'll be showing Viver's thickness planer and also their joiner in the next video. I'll link both the thickness planer and the joiner in this video description. For the finishes, I'll start with Minwax Pre-Stain Wood Conditioner and I'll apply this generously with a chip brush to prevent any blotching when I go to apply the gel stain.
I recently created another video on my other channel, Mad City Restorations, where I applied five different finishes to these Lane Acclaimed tables. I use that table as a reference to decide what finish to apply for each project. For this table, I chose General Finishes Oil-Based Gel Stain in Candlelight. I'll finish this with General Finishes Oil-Based Armor Seal in Satin. I'll apply the gel stain with a foam brush, and although these tables typically weren't finished on the bottom side, it only takes a few more moments. I'll apply the gel stain and then wipe it off immediately with a shop rag. For the larger surfaces, it's important to apply the gel stain quickly before it dries. I'll apply this to the entire tabletop and then come back, wipe it off with a shop rag. I'll allow the gel stain to dry overnight. I'll come back and apply gloss black oil-based protective enamel with a brush to the bottom feet of this table. While the table is upside down, I'll start applying the top coat, which is Armor Seal oil-based wipe-on poly. To clean the brushes whenever I use an oil-based product, I just soak them in mineral spirits. As directed by General Finishes, I'll apply a light coat for the first coat of Armor Seal. I chose to apply this with a t-shirt. You could also use a shop rag or even a non-abrasive pad. I'll apply a total of four coats of Armor Seal to this table, gently sanding between each coat with fine grit sandpaper. For the final reveal, you'll see two different cocktail tables refinished for this channel. The other video is available on the channel as well. This will be the busiest week for the channel so far, so I look forward to seeing you several more times this week. Goodbye for now.